If you are worried about not being able to build an appointment setter for when you get your client, no worries, I got you. I'm gonna go through exactly on how to build this out step-by-step step using the best practices that I've learned of building these things for the past two and a half years. So in the end, when we build this out, it's gonna look like this. Currently, I have it set to the 25th. So in two days time, it'll book a spot on my calendar at 12 p.m. Currently, I have nothing in here. So when I click on execute workflow, it'll run really quickly i'll refresh and there we go with henrik at 12 pm for 15 minutes and then when i try and book in the same spot again then it will tell us that we cannot book and that is going to be our first part of the booking appointment setup so what are some prerequisites for us to get started and fyi just for this lesson we are only going to be focusing on the booking part we'll set up a google calendar we'll create a deterministic workflow just the one that you've seen and we'll just discuss some other options which is things like this and the idea is that we are creating a workflow that will be part of a cohesive appointment set up for vapi later on in this series so this is part one and every week on friday i'll be releasing a new video showing you guys on how to build this out so uh, hit the subscribe button like the video so all you're really going to need is a few things to get started you'll need an n8n account I would prefer if you've got the n810.io or the cloud version uh, it is much easier to hook up the google calendar to that you'll need a google account and last of all a willingness to learn i've got this already pre-built here but what we're going to do is build out everything from scratch so from here we are going to type in google calendar we click on this and then we find the thing that says create an event and our first step will be just to hook this up with our google calendar and see if we can get a booking in there so i'll, du I'll double click into that module or that node and if you guys haven't already let's create a new credential we'll sign in with google so when i click on this button i'll get all my google accounts come up just click the one you want to authenticate with but once you've done so you'll come back and you'll have something saying google calendar account and then from your list you'll be able to click on this drop down and then select the email that you just authenticated with or the google account you authenticated with everything should be pre-filled for you all we then do is just click on execute workflow and we should now have a booking for like right now so whatever time that is for you for me it is saturday at 1 p.m so this is now the a booking that just happened and if you notice when we click on execute workflow a few times in a row it will actually just keep on adding <laughs> new events each time i click that button which is not too great let's just refresh there should be three down now so out of the box google calendar does not check whether we have a slot busy before it tries to book which is one of the biggest issues great so let's try and fix that issue now by adding in another module so i'm disconnecting them and i'm going to type in google calendar again find it and then there is in the calendar actions it says get availability in a calendar so i'm going to click on this and again click on the drop down select your email and what we're going to do is hook that up to our when clicking execute workflow trigger and then just execute that and see what kind of response we get it should say false because we are now busy because we've got we just booked ourselves like six slots right here so it definitely should say false now let's then pretend that we don't have any of these events i'm going to go in here and just delete all of them So let's delete, so I just delete all them. And then when I click on execute workflow, when I click into this now, it says available, true, which is great for us because now we have a way of checking when we make booking at a specific time, whether that slot's actually busy or not. So this is what we are gonna do to check. And we'll just rename this if check if available, because that, that's what the result comes back as and let's chuck in a if node and what i'm thinking of doing here is if the result comes back as true that means it's available 
we will then go and book. And if the result is false, so it is not available, we are just going to put in a placeholder for now. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to rename it as placeholder. And let's call this busy. So later on in our build, so this would be a response back to that be telling us that that slot is taken. Anyway, we're going to check if, if it's available. In this case, it should actually book for us because it is now available. So if we click on this module, it should say true for you guys. And in here, when we, when we click onto the book one, you, we should now have a bunch of options here saying that everything was successful. And we jump back into our calendar. We now have that booking. Fantastic. We've now made the foundations of our build. And let's just make it a little bit more robust so that we we can actually then hook it up later on with our VAPI, the tools and all, all the other good stuff. So to make it work, we then need to, I like to set a, initially at, at the start of every single one of my workflows, I like to have like a main set variable node. And in this case, I'm just going to have VAP placeholder variables. Look, this is where we are now pretending. So later on, VAPI will send us results from its tools. And currently, we don't want to set up with VAPI. We just want to work on the back end, first of all, and then we'll hook everything else up, which is why we're setting them statically for now. So I'm going to click into the VAPI variables module. And I'll keep on saying module because I use make.com so much, but it's nodes in NA10, nodes. After all, NA10 stands for node nodemation. And there's eight letters between and the N and the A and the other N. So I'll show you guys nodemation. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's why it's called NA10. So in here, we'll have a variable called requested time. And we need to use this thing called eight. 601 ISO format. Yep, a bunch of cool words, but I've got an explanation here of how it should look like. And you guys can check GBT or Google it later. But basically, we need to the start and end times for a Google Calendar and actually for all calendars in the world. We need to have the year, the month, the day. The T is always constant, so you always have the T that doesn't change. Then you'll have the minutes, the seconds, and then either plus or minus depending on what kind of time zone you're in. So if I'm currently in Poland, it'll be plus two for me. If you're in the US, let's say New York, it'll be negative four for you. Um, so here's an example of how it should look like. So I'm just going to jump into this and just actually just copy that. It'll save me some, some formatting stuff in a sec. Now let's jump back to our VAPI variables and then paste that in. Now in here, I'm going to change the year to 2025 and let's set it to... Let's set 1230 uh, and we actually don't even need the time zone in here because I'll show you a little trick. So we could possibly just have it like so. Let's see how that goes. So we're going to connect these two up and let's not book any meetings for now. I'll try and test with as the least amount of modules as possible. Initially, once they all work and I hook up more stuff onto it, so kind of breaking up a problem into a big problem, in smaller chunks. So here, what we want to do now is check whether this variable that we are going to be sending through now, again, statically from, we, we are pretending we're sending it from VAPI, but we're going to want to put it into, into this module. So what we have to do is double click on here, execute previous nodes, and we are going to throw in this into here, and we are going to, going to then throw in this into here as well. I'll press the full stop. Then go to date time, uh, and that is it. Now, if you guys notice, it actually did the that time zone for me, which is great. So it, this is working currently off my ANA 8N time zone in my account. We will now go to to date time, and then dot plus, and then uh, let's say it depends how long you want the meeting to be. So let's say it's thirty minutes. And then just type in minutes. So now we, instead of it being 12.30, the end time is now 1 p.m. And using that time zone. So let's check in my calendar if that time is free. And it should be because I have nothing on the 25th at 2 p.m. So let's go back to the 25th. So this is the 25th. And I don't have anything at 12.30 
here. And now what we can do is join up the rest of the workflow and then click on the create event and execute previous nodes. And in here, click onto this because we haven't set this up yet. And let's just drag and drop the result from here, set it to Boolean is true. And if it is true, then it will go up the top branch. And if it's not, then it will tell us that that slot is busy. So let's jump in here and set up the other variables. And I think what we can do is actually just copy and paste them from here so that we don't have to do all that later. Just copy and paste that. And in here, we actually might need to uh, just change it up slightly so we can go to bracket, little quotation mark, select VAPI variables. Then we go item dot JSON. And another way to have done what I just did then is just to, you know, drag and drop that. And then just repeat the two dates time to, then you go plus, and then you do the 30 minutes with the, like that's some, that's another way to do it. And then here I can just drag and drop this and then go to date time. Okay. Amazing. So now what we can do is just click on execute workflow. And now that should have booked in for us for. The time we wanted was 12.30 on the 25th. So now when I refresh my calendar, they go at 12.30 at, so we are missing some things. We're missing the title and we're missing the description. Uh, let's add these in the right now. So let's go into this create event module. And in here we have a bunch of options that will let us do that. So in here, the find the thing that says summary. Once you find this, this is where you will I just type in test title and test title will add another field as well, which is a description. And in here, we'll most likely put in the person's phone number. So let's just say for now, put in those digits. So now when we try to book, it actually should say busy. Perfect. It's really good. So now it'll go to the person say, okay, maybe we can try a different time. And it might say then 1 p.m. Click on save and then we execute workflow. Now it should book in for us with a description and a title. So let's go back out. There you go. Now we got our title. We can click into this and now we see the phone number. Perfect. But we're missing one more thing. Where is the Google Meet? Easy fix. We come into create event, go add field, and we add in conference data. And in here, we click onto Google Meet. And now when we book this, I can probably just delete it, it'll be quicker. I delete, and then when I book, we'll now have, after refreshing, a Google Meet link that someone can join the meeting with. I think that would be pretty much it for this build. Yeah, so I, what I wanted to discuss was the next section, which was why we did it this way, which was using a deterministic workflow instead of something like this. So let's see, just for one, Let's see in my execution tab how quick there are uh, like the bookings were. So 740, 540, 210, 630, 330, 227. Now these numbers might seem big, but they're actually milliseconds. So that means, so 500 milliseconds is half a second. So all of these are extremely quick API calls that we did to book and check calendars. This is what we want to aim for when we use, when we're setting up a backend for our voice AI agent. It needs to be very, very quick, precise, 100% right all the time, because if it's not, then it will make, that it will create for our client big headaches and for us later on too. Okay, so I'm going to now just swap to show you guys the runtime for something like this. So I'll just give you a little quick run through. In the edit fields, I've got the sim similar thing. We're trying to book for 11.30 of that date. In here, I've just got the prompt uh, user message. It's actually not doing anything because I've put them in statically anyway. And this is my prompt. I've just told her the tools that it has and it's a booking expert. In here, I've got the a book calendar tool with the JSON from my set, my edit fields. 
and the check availability will also have the same thing. So the idea is that it will check the availability. If it is, then it will book. So right now, when we execute the workflow here, it's now running, it's now checked if it's available, but then, you know, it made sure that it was available and then it created a response for us. And it actually booked us in at 11.30 on the 25th. And it did, it did a fairly good job, but look at the time difference. I mean, have a look, <laughs> it's, it's huge. It's 4.48 seconds for a booking. And now if I run it again, and it's gonna just check for the availability, it's gonna be 2.3 seconds. Whereas before the check-in availability was 300 milliseconds, so 0.3 of a second. And before it was, for booking, it was about, let's say 700 milliseconds. And now it's like, now it's like 4,500 milliseconds. So seven times more almost longer than the other calls. Now, I, am, I am not confident that out of a thousand or like 150 calls that we might do, it will get it right every single time. It is an AI, it is not perfect, and it can get stuff wrong. So not only that, it can get stuff wrong, it also costs extra money to do these operations. So you're letting AI do something that could be done in like a half a second, and I've seen some of the people starting out in this space, so it, it sometimes runs between eight and 10 seconds just to check availability and or book. Why would you do that to yourself if you can just do it in, you know, half a second and it will always get it right. So anyway, hopefully I've changed your mind on how to build these things and we want to build them more else like this. Anyway, thank you ladies and gents for watching. And this is part one. If you want to watch part two, stay tuned for the next episode of Dragon Ball GT. Just kidding. Stay tuned and in the next lesson, we are going to learn on how to build the check-in availability. And then in the next few videos, we'll put all these things together so we can actually make a proper build out of this. See you guys there and peace.